into the shady nook. No, thank you. Oh. What's on the menu today, Timmy? Water pool. Yeah, get out. Get inspired by the quirks of nature. You can't help but admire my stripy attire. I'm the pipe fish. Now I'm gonna rub my eyes and hey, are you still here? Coming up later, our crew take a dip with one of Africa's most formidable predators. Well, one of the great natural spectacles that we're privileged to have at this time of year on our home coast in South Africa is the sardine run and it's one of those amazing events that we get to witness. When you first get in the water here, it's difficult to settle down. You know, you jump in, it's noisy, you're being slapped, there's fish tearing around, there's a lot of sharks. And don't forget that below you, there's about 100 meters of water that you can't see through. So anything could be coming up beneath. And we tend to be looking up because that's where the action is in the light. You can feel animals swimming past you. You feel the water hitting you from their wakes. And the noise is quite intense. What's happening right now is that we are getting these loose shoals of, of sardines and red-eye sardines that are coming through. And the predators are very, very concentrated because they're all waiting for the food to come along. One of the things I found really amazing are these Cape Gannets and the way they dive. You can see the vapor trails above. And now we're lying at about 20 meters down here and these birds aren't supposed to get that deep. But in our experience, and as you can see here, they function really well. They almost fly underwater. But after a couple of seconds of watching this, you tend to forget that you're actually there. And looking through the camera, it's almost like watching television. So in a way, we're removed. And it's only when you take your eye away from the viewfinder and look at what's going on that you start to question what you're actually doing in this situation. As these bait balls develop and progress, the amount of fish obviously gets fewer and fewer. And you can see how they're starting to thin out. And they're almost more predators than there are sardines by the end of it. This is exactly the sort of action that we're anticipating now at this time of year. And what we should get in the next few days are bigger shoals of bait fish, potentially less predators, but a lot more sardines. Well, at the moment in the Okavanga Delta in Moremi Game Reserve, the winds of change have blown and winter's just arriving. And the lions here are, are quite affected by this change of season. It's quite typical for us to spend a whole day with a pride of sleeping lions. And they seem to do that a lot. They do it really well. But on this particular day, the pride had a little bit of an edge to them. And this morning they're particularly alert, not sleeping, 
and they'd been traveling at night. As winter approaches, their main prey, the buffalo, tend to move around looking for grazing. Getting ahead of the pride like this is, is quite easy because lions don't tend to get nervous. They'll just walk straight towards the vehicle. Let we keep a fair distance away. And if you park ahead of them, you can hold the camera low. And as long as you don't lean out the car too much, you can get shots like this. They tend to regard the vehicle as a single form. So as long as you don't break the outline, you're safe and they remain settled. We just put the camera on the ground here. Got a wonderful low shot of the pride passing by and they don't tend to take much notice. Because of the time we'd spent with these animals, they're pretty used to the vehicle as well. So they don't really tend to bat an eyelid. They'll glance at us, but they don't really acknowledge what we're up to as long as we stay inside the car. coming into their hard season for them. The end of winter is quite desperate. Not a lot of grazing. So all their big prey animals tend to move north where there's more water. Winter is truly a fantastic time in Southern Africa and one of the other special things that we have in this area is the Okavango Delta. And as winter sets in, we get this cold water flood that comes through the panhandle of the Delta. And it's freezing. Standing on this boat, it's probably 9 or 10 degrees Celsius. We're bundled up, dreading getting into the wetsuit to go diving with the crocodiles. Once we've jumped off the boat into the channel, we're in amongst dead tree stumps, massive trees that have fallen off the islands. And the current is really the first challenge that meets us. We often hold on to things or tuck in behind a clump of weeds or, or submerged grass where you find little eddies. And the crocodiles have the same plan. They don't want to waste energy in the main current and we find them sitting here like this in the lee of a bank in a little dark space. We wonder what they think of us and they're definitely very cautious. They have the hardware for confrontation but in all the cases when we've interacted with them, they've never chosen to use it. If you choose the right animal, you can end up getting really close. And eventually they politely decline your company and move off into deeper water. These crocs are moving in from the floodplains as the level of the river drops. All their food is drained into these main arteries, so they just follow it. And by the end of winter, there are plenty of crocodiles in these channels. One gets a good sense of scale. This is not a particularly big crocodile, probably eight or nine feet, but it's still big enough. Next week, our crew make a sad discovery on our local South African beach. 